All right, welcome. Well, I've never really done one of these YouTube videos before, but when looking for a way to try and replace the battery of what is my favorite mouse of all time, this little T630, and I think there was a white one called the T640 maybe, uh, both of which have been out of production now for quite a while. Um, the mouse has a really nice good feel to it. It's nice and solid. It's made ridiculously well. Uh, it's rechargeable with a standard micro USB. The only slight problem with this Bluetooth mouse is once the battery starts getting a little weak, there's no way to replace the battery. At least that's what it, they're supposed to be. So I started looking around the internet to see if there was a way to replace the battery and how to disassemble or take this apart because there really was no visible means of doing so. And there were a couple of people that talked about it, but I can also see that the one or two that I found, they beat their mouse up pretty bad. Well, this is one that I've already changed the battery on. And as you can see, there's not a mark or a scratch. And it turns out that it works very, very nicely. So the battery that you need to change in this mouse is actually this little thing right here. Very small little lithium ion battery. Now, the other problem with that is it turns out that there are several other batteries available in the market that claim to fit. And I have made the mistake of ordering a couple of those only to find out that they were slightly different in size as well. And it wasn't so much the physical format as much as the um, thickness of the battery that made a difference because it turns out there's only so much space inside this mouse, just enough for this battery to fit. So what I wanted to do is see if I can offer some assistance in how to open this mouse without damaging it. The one tip that I did see is, was the recommendation that you use a blow dryer. And I use the typical hair dryer. I really did not want to use a heat gun because I was fearful that I would melt the plastic. And I was initially under the impression that it would probably have some adhesive all the way around the outside perimeter, but it turns out that's not where the adhesive is. So what I did is I used the blow dryer to heat up the face of the mouse as well as the sides. And you don't have to cook it, but you get it nice and warm. There was some reference that the adhesive might um, become very weak at about 140 degrees, and that's pretty hot. Um, and I don't know quite what temperature I got up to to get there, but I did heat it. The other thing I noticed when taking the first one apart is I started along the side, and then after it was apart and I got to see what was in it, I actually think it's better to heat around the back corner, either this side or this side. Well, if you heat the whole side, but this is where you want to start prying it up. And the reason being is there's all plastic in here, not a circuit board or, you know, that could get damaged or destroyed. So after using the heat gun to make a nice warm top, so it was a little hot to touch, especially around the side, I went in with a small X-Acto knife and used that to pry up around the sides. All you have to do is get a little bit of a gap in there, working it around very carefully. And as soon as you get it pried up a little bit, then you can either put in a plastic spudger or some other tool. And it turns out I did not have one handy, but what I had was my trusty old staple remover, which actually worked out very well. So I was able to get in there once I brought it up enough, and then you're able to slowly work it around, breaking the adhesive as you go, and also maybe reheating it once or twice. So that what you end up with is being able to take the cover off the mouse and there's a little bit of a ribbing cable inside. So the first thing you need to do is literally, once you get it apart to a little bit, flip up this little tab right over here so that you can gently slide out the ribbing cable without damaging it. So the reason why I advocate heating along the back first is as you can see is there's nothing but plastic here. If you try and, and stick something along the front before you get some space in here, you might damage this circuit board, which is actually more like a piece of film, which is part of what uh, uh, is used for the touch surface on the mouse. And I did not want to destroy that. Then once you get the mouse open, you can see it's clear, it's plastic on all sides and there's four screws. The four screws are simply right over here and we can take those apart really quick. Normally I would probably just put this into a, a, a fast slow-mo and we're time-lapse to get them out. But for these 
small four screws, I didn't think we needed to worry about it. Now, I will point out that there is a certain way to put this little black plastic cover in, and that is it does tuck underneath the lip in the front. So when you put it in and take it out, always tilt the back first so that you can gently unhook it from the front because reassembly is gonna be much the same way where you have to get those in secured in the little tabs in the front and then screw down in the back. And then once you get those four screws out, you can lift out this piece of plastic. And then you'll see there's two more circuit boards here. There are three more screws to remove. One over, where is it? There's one over here and then one on either side, one here and one right under the film. And the one right under the film over here also has a little bit of a cable. That cable, when you take it off, there's a little metal clip. You'll see, let's see if we can get a good camera shot. A little metal clip right, it's a little hard when you're looking at it, right over here. But you're gonna have to make sure that that metal clip goes in straight and doesn't touch the contacts of the circuits right next to it because that would cause it to short and then not have the battery work. So once you get those three screws out and we can take those out really quickly as well. That will reveal the nice little teeny battery that's in here. And this is the other place where most people go wrong too. So here's our three little screws, probably not so great to use them on a black surface. And there's an, yet another ribbon cable right there as well. So what I did to make it easier to work on the first time is I unhooked that ribbon cable too. And you do that again by flipping up that little white tab and then sliding the ribbon cable out gently. You'll notice that over here, there's a small piece of foam You'll have to remove that piece of foam on top of the plug. That actually helps keep the plug secure when it's in the case. And to make it easier, there's also another little black rubber ring right around the USB plug. So the other little trick that no one tells you about is how to get that plug for the battery off. And it turns out that the way to do that is by gently going to the bottom of it and prying it straight up because it doesn't slide out, it just presses straight down. And the battery is also just simply glued to the board so you can either just stick a sparger or something under that very gently just to break the adhesive and, take, and remove the battery. So just remember this little plug is extremely fragile and it goes it attaches by lifting straight up by just prying up underneath it with a small screwdriver and the installation is going to be the exact reverse of that. So the battery that I found to be most accurate as far as fit is the one I purchased off of Amazon. It was an exact duplicate to the battery that came out versus the ones that I saw on, on let's just say purchased on eBay as well that did not fit. The first battery on eBay had a plug that was the wrong size, even though the battery looked a little thinner. And then the second one had a problem with, as I showed you before, the battery being too thick. And even though it's only just about two millimeters thicker, strangely enough, that two millimeter difference in thickness will not allow to bat the battery to fit in the mouse. So the installation, as far as the battery terminal is the exact reverse of how you got it off. You place the terminal right over the black plug where it goes and you simply press it down. And to be honest, that can be a little tricky. So uh, let's see if we can get that. And it does not seem to like me. We might need a little more light on that. Make sure I'm doing this right. Who would have guessed that the hardest thing is the is the simplest? All right, once you get the bat the plug in there, gently 
pressing on it, you just place the battery back where it was before. There's still going to be enough adhesive left on the circuit board to hold the new battery. And then you put that little piece of foam back on top of the plug because that's going to help the battery case keep the plug secured in place. Because otherwise, it's just like a loose friction fit with a small little tab on it. And then we reattach the circuit board. Making sure that the battery wires are nowhere near where you're about to screw in the terminal. So just make sure you keep those wires that are right over here where the battery was away from the screw terminal. Now to save time, I am not, from the reassembly standpoint right now, I'm not going to put the screws back in. Um, however, then in order to reassemble the mouse, once you put those three screws back in, you must do that. There is a little tiny um, spring on this as well, and that's what gives you the spring tension when you're clicking the mouse. The ribbon cable goes through the hole. Then you lock down, you tilt the front of the plastic shield to lock it into the two tabs in the front. You reinstall the four screws. And then to get a little bit of an extra bit, some people talk about using hot glue. Well, and remember the little tab here for the wire that it has to be perfectly straight. Some people talk about using hot, a hot glue gun to reattach the mouse. I did not do that. I did not find it was necessary. However, I did use a piece of double-sided tape, just a thin piece of double-sided tape right here. Well, I guess it's right here on the back of the mouse where the clear plastic is just to give it a little better adhesive. And then you take the ribbon cable that you removed, slide it into the slot here. Once the ribbon cable is in the, the slot, you just push the little white tab down and then you can repress, recover the mouse just by pressing firmly to secure it. And it turns out that's all you need to do to replace the battery. And then you'll end up with one just like this with a nice new fresh battery that holds a charge and not a mark on the side of the mouse, no chips, no scratches, no rough feel, and you still get to enjoy the pleasure of your mouse. That is not longer, no longer available. Hope this video helps. I just did it since I couldn't find any information on the web about it and um, did not want to destroy the mouse, especially if you only have one. As it turns out, I have three because I used to keep one or two on my desk here. So when my battery went, I'd always have one to plug right in uh, and start using. And then I had a spare that I carried with me when I traveled. So now they're all three sitting around my desk because the battery life had gotten to the point where they would barely last the day. Once the new battery was installed, it was one going lasting about a week, just like they used to when I first bought the mouse. So hope that helps. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to help if I can.